Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're finally going to tackle one that you guys have been chanting about for a couple of months now. <laughs> and we're going to paint a salamander. These guys are a lot of fun. And they have a few more steps than most of the marines I tend to paint. So, you know, it'll be a little bit interesting to go through and see the way that I did this guy in particular. So as you can see, they're based on much the same technique that I tend to do, which is the old base wash and dry brush. But there's a couple of extra little things in there that I think you guys are going to get a kick out of. So, without further ado, let's get started have a look at what colours we're going to use. So the first step in painting our salamander is to give him a nice grey spray. And I've used here Storm Vermin Fur. Mechanica Standard Grey will do exactly the same job. It's just going to be much easier to paint over than a black or white wood. And I think that, that mid-tone is really going to help us out. Now, unfortunately, Citadel doesn't do a green spray in the sort of range that we want for our salamanders. You've got either Death Guard Green or Caliban Green, and they are at the opposite ends of what we really need. If you happen to be able to get your hands on Army Painter stuff, though, pick up a can of Green Skin, because it will basically do these, these stages, okay? If you've got it, get it. It's, it's good stuff. It can be a bit of a butt because, you know, it's classified as a dangerous material for shipping, so you tend to pay for a courier for that one instead. But if you're making an order anywhere, then, you know, throw on a can of green skin as well. You may as well at that point. For what we're doing, we're going to start from a grey. Give them a couple of thin coats of warg flesh, and then we're going to go over it exactly the same way with warpstone glow. And that is the salamander green that we want to achieve. After that point, now I've hidden them away here, We've got Non Oil. I'm actually going to skip this one. If you want to use the Non Oil though, once you've finished your initial layers, what I suggest is go over the whole model with Non Oil, then come back on over and overbrush with Warpstone Glow. Same as I did with this Dark Angel here. Now that's one way that you can get some really deep shading, but I don't really think we need to go that far. You, your mileage may vary, so experiment as you like. Then once we've done these two stages, we're going to go straight on to a dry brush of Niblet Green. And I, if there is an award for paint I most want to hear pronounced by Rowan Atkinson, it is Niblet Green. It is, I love it. Um, that's going to be our highlight. Then over everything, we're going to hit it with some Bealtan Green. We're then going to get on to the blacks and gold and what have you afterwards. But just for that, that distinct armor, this is where we're going to start. So, starting off, I've got a large base brush. Now, mine are really ragged. <laughs> it's about time I replace these, if I'm honest. But I've gone ahead and added just a little bit of water so that my paint is going to flow smoothly off the brush. And then all I'm going to do is pretty much paint the whole model. I mean, obviously all of the armor, but if I end up getting someone as bolter while I'm doing his arm, for example, it doesn't matter. Let's cruise around now and make sure that all of this armor is wag flesh. So after that second coat is dried, you can see how smooth and rich that color is. Okay, white flesh is a really nice color. And uh, if you want to look at doing some alternate sort of salamanders, it's a great place to start. Anyway, I've got here some warpstone glow with just a little bit of water in my brush. Now you'll notice when this first goes on, okay, it isn't going to cover perfectly. That's okay. This is one where, again, we're going to want to do a second coat. Now there we have, after four coats, <laughs> that nice salamander green. This is why I recommend, if you can get your hands on that Army Painter green skin, do pick it up. It's good stuff. Now, this is a really nice green. You know, Warpstone Glow in particular goes well over that green skin. So, if that's the way you want to paint these, then you're going to end up with the same result. As it is, this is done. This is ready for our next step. Like I said, I'm going to skip over the Null Oil and instead go straight to a dry brush. So, as always, just getting a little bit of Niblet Green on my brush, working it into the bristles and then kind of wiping most of it off. Okay, I don't want to leave much behind to begin with. I'll just dry brush here at the edge of my base to see what I'm going to leave behind. And not very much. That's good. That's about what I want. So now all we're going to do is try and pick along the very hardest edges of detail. So in some ways, you might find it easier to go sort of against the grain, traveling up the body or what have you. Uh, but anywhere that there is a hard edge, okay, we're going to use this dry brush to fake as if we've uh, <laughs> painstakingly highlighted it. So here's a good spot to take a look at. Across the old backpack, you can see how the dry brush is just catching the very edges of the detail. And 
highlighting that for us. Now the cool thing with salamanders is because the uh, the shoulder pads themselves are going to be black, you can be quite generous with this dry brush if I'm honest. You know, it's not going to matter too much if you end up smearing this over a flat area of detail because most of that's going to get painted over. Anyhow, I'm going to go around now and finish off with this niblet green. Now after our dry brush, we've got a nice sort of three-dimensional effect. You know, we've caught the edges of all the detail while leaving that nice base green in place. It's actually quite easy. So now I've got my Bealtang green and my medium shade brush, and I'm going to go around and paint this over all of the armor, making sure that it ends up in all the recesses, because I want that nice deep shading. Make sure that you're covering all of the armor, because if you leave anywhere, you know, you're going to find it looks a little bit peculiar without this stuff painted in there. But however you go about it, if you've got a big old brush, <laughs> go around now and let's just get this on. You want to leave it for about half an hour to dry. Now once that shade is dried, you'll see how much it's done to that green. And it's really brought together the niblet green and the warpstone glow, so that it's not so extreme a highlight. Now you might find in some cases, particularly on your sergeants and the like, that you do want a slightly sharper highlight. So I've got here a little moot green, which is almost identical to niblet green, just a little bit more yellow I think. And what I'm going to do is I've got some prepped up on my brush, and just using the edge of it I'm going to pick out some really extreme edges that I want to absolutely scream <laughs> on this sergeant. Okay, so you don't have to do much of this and you'll find that your dry brush has actually given you kind of a guideline to follow. You know, where is the light and where are the extreme edges going to naturally catch? So you can do as much of this as you like or as little. You know, I would probably suggest you don't want to do very much, otherwise you may as well just have edge highlighted the whole model. But for some of these areas, just take a few seconds to sharpen them up and you'll find that your sergeants will pop all the more for it. Now just using that dry brush as a guideline you can see how I've picked out a few spots that I really want to screen with that color and that's so easy to do. You know you're not highlighting the whole model you're letting most of the dry brush do the work for you but in just a few select places you can really make these marines properly scream green. <laughs> So I've got now my black, and here comes a fun game to play. What parts of a salamander's armor are black? Because depending on which bloody codex you're reading, it's different. Uh, they change around quite a bit. One of the constants, though, is nice black shoulder pads. So I've got here my Vallejo black. You might be using uh, Abaddon black, but whatever the case, you know, here's an easy target. Paint these inner sections in. I'm also going to give him one black knee pad, because uh, I've seen that on quite a few of these guys used to, to denote uh, squad or company marking, and I quite like that. Now some folks will paint in all of the backpack in black. Um, I have just spent the time highlighting the thing. <laughs> so I'm going to do just these little knobbly bits uh, in black, and I'll do this black panel in the center. Okay, Otherwise I'm going to leave the rest of that green. So this is not too difficult, you're really just going around now and adding another layer. Take your time when you get close to any of the green areas that you'll want to leave intact, but otherwise, let's go get this done. Now that those black panels are done, I've got a little bit of lead belcher, and I'm going to go over all of the metal, including anywhere that I'm going to paint gold in a little bit, because we're going to do these guys quite a deep, brassy sort of colour. And with all of those metal areas done, it's time to go back over with a little bit of the base for our brassy colour. Now you might want to use Retributor Armour here if you like a bright gold, but I think it clashes a little bit with the green. So I'm using Balthazar Gold and we're going to go for a slightly deeper shade. So all I'm going to do now is go over those areas that I want to be gold or brass and just fill them in now. So you can pick where you want these to go on your model. Now I've finished off those gold details, and at the same time I went around quickly and filled in anything else that I was going to wash at this stage. So the leather, the purity seals, that sort of stuff. Just so you've got those colours there, Rhinox Hide, Screamer Pink, and Zandri Dust was all I used, and that's where I got to. You know, I'm going to shade all of these with the same colours, so I figured, hey, I'll save some time. So I've got here my Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm going to use a medium layer brush to apply it, because I want a fair amount of control. I don't want to go all over on the armor and sort of undo the work we've already done. <laughs> so get in there now and just carefully splash on your Agrax Earthshade onto all of these bronzy details. 
and you know anything like the the pink your purity seals and that sort of carry on so wherever you want this to go obviously and then we'll get on and we'll do the null oil afterwards and then i'll null oil over everything else so all of your silver details and your leather mostly now once all of those washes are dry you can get in with your highlighting so i've got here some liberator gold and i'm going to use my small layer brush all I want to do is brighten up this brassy color. So I'm just going to pick the very edges of stuff. Then just a little doom bald brown for any of the leather details. And you can be quite sparing with this if you want to skip over some of it. We'll do a little scream of pink and Xandri dust straight back onto these purity seals. Just a little bit of Dawnstone along some of your black details. Then let's get some Stormhost Silver onto all of these silver details and just finish off all the weapons and, you know, tools and what have you using this stuff. Then finally on his armor, fill in any of these little ribbing areas, so the undersuit of his armor in ashen gray or you can even do these black and then highlight them in dawnstone but i prefer for them to look a little bit different to the black stuff that he's wearing otherwise so knock yourself out how you fancy here then with the ashen gray applied our armor is complete all of his equipment's done and he's looking pretty cool you know if he's got his helmet on he's done but you might notice there is one detail that i've quite conspicuously saved to last and that's his skin now the reason for this is that the skin color for the salamanders is a subject of some debate. <laughs> if you want to turn around and paint them like they are on the codex now, then they are black, you know, literally coal black with glowing red eyes. Now, if we go back a few years, I mean a few years now, <laughs> to Codex Armageddon, that was the first time the salamanders actually had their own rules. And in that, there was a captain who was painted up with dark skin. So if you want to say he was painted up like a black guy, but he wasn't literally black, he was dark skinned. Now, interestingly enough, there was also a white guy in one of the salamander squads carrying the flamer. So, you know, your mileage may vary on sort of how deep you want to take that particular cannon. But for a while, the salamanders were known to be, you know, the dark skinned marines. And then they got retconned and suddenly they were all black and red eyes and what have you. I like to paint my salamanders like they were back in the day. Now, in particular, in the last edition of the Codex, so again, you know, going backwards and forwards here, uh, the scouts themselves were shown as being just dark skinned. So if you want to paint your scouts with dark skin and then your Marines black, you know, that's up to you. That can actually work pretty well because the whole idea is that with the salamanders, their flaw is that what's responsible for making us tanned, you know, and reacting to radiation on the skin is hyperactive. So it turns them black. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, it is a matter of personal taste. So what I'm going to do is show you how I paint my salamanders. And I'm going to paint them dark skinned. But how I'm going to do it is to paint them really dark. So that at first blush across from the table, you might think he was painted to match the current codex. So to start off with, I'm going to give his skin a coat of Dryad Bark. Now, I want to be pretty careful with this because I'm going quite close to areas that I have already painted. But whatever the case, just take your time here and get this on. You might find, with all of the detail that we've done so far, if you sort of splashed it in green or the like, that you don't need to do a second coat. But I trust you guys by now, <laughs> you can tell whether or not you want to go back over. Now we want to shade in his face, but if we were to use something like Reichland Flesh Shade or even Agrax Earth Shade, we wouldn't get a huge amount of contrast. It wouldn't add much to the tone of the skin. So you might see I've actually got here Druki Violet, and I'm going to paint in his skin purple. Now you don't want to use a huge amount of this. I've probably got too much on my brush there, actually. So let's get rid of some of that and move around what I've already got. But just making sure that you're getting into all of the recesses on his face like you normally would. And you'll see, well, you might not see while it's wet, <laughs> but it's introducing just a little bit of warmth and darkening that tone down. So it's going to look more like the black salamanders that are in the current run. 
So with that purple dry, we're going to go back to dry our bark, and we're going to highlight his face using exactly the same technique we would for any other, and that's just to leave the very recesses, and we want to paint this back on over the top of the high points of his face, especially that big old chrome dome. Now we're going to get in and highlight with our Gawthor Brown. Now this is a real sharp transition of colour, like these are very far apart really, so you want to be quite sparing with it. Just concentrate along the brows, his nose, and just cheekbones, okay? You don't want to put much of this on. And there's the finished effect. As you can see, it is actually quite subtle. You know, from a distance, it would look black, but get up closer and he actually just looks like a really dark-skinned marine. So it's up to you if you want to paint them that way, but I think you'll get away with, you know, most of the purists not giving you any trouble. Either way, I'm going to paint his teeth in now, and I'm going to use a little bit of pallid witch flesh rather than a pure white, because if you're going for white, you know, it's going to look really sharp. And very carefully, with the camera in the way. Whoa. Now I've gone ahead and finished his headgear in the same way I painted all of the metal on the rest of the model, and then gave a quick non oil to all of those rubberized areas that we did ashen grey earlier. And with that, our salamander is complete. Now I think the important part with this one is looking at how you can use the dry brush as kind of a guide for a very quick splatter of some edge highlights, just to tidy those up. You won't need to in the most part, but anywhere that you want it to really shine, that's a cool way of doing it. As always guys, you can get in touch, drop a comment down there in the old box below, both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there as well, though I'm generally a little bit better at answering on the Twitter, <laughs> if I'm honest, just so you guys know. Uh, as well, this is another one of the videos made possible with the backing of my lovely patrons. Uh, it continues to absolutely baffle me that there are people who want to really see me keep doing this. So, you know, sincerely, thank you very much. And as ever, guys, to everybody out there, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.